it's time for part four of the head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat assessment. And today we're going to be looking at eyes. So just like the rest of the assessment, you're going to start with an inspection. So I'm inspecting both eyes. I'm looking for symmetry on the face. Okay. They're in the same place and same location in the head. I see no drooping of the eye. I see that they are both symmetrical. Okay. I see no periorbital swelling, which is perfect. Next, I'm going to inspect the conjunctiva. So I'm going to have you look up for me, pull down on the lower eyelid, and it should be a nice pink color with no drainage, no redness. Okay. And I'm going to have you look down pulling on the upper eyelid now. And I'm looking at the sclera, making sure it's a nice white color and that the top eyelid is a nice pink. And it is perfect. Okay. I'm also going to be looking at eyebrows and eyelashes for, or for any hair. And they both have hair on them. And they're both symmetrical. So now we can test for visual acuity. So there's several tests we're going to do for the eyes. The first one we're going to test is corneal light reflex. For the corneal light reflex, you're going to use your pen light and you're going to shine the light straight into the pupil, and you should see that reflection in the light in the same place on both eyes. This is testing the muscle function, and if you see that place or the light that's not symmetrical or it doesn't shine in the same place, it could mean some paralysis in one or both eyes. Okay. You okay? Yeah. The next, light, or the next test we're going to do is the pupillary light reflex. So for this one, the patient's going to stare straight ahead again, you can kind of cover just to give yourself some darkness. And then you're just going to go in from the side slowly. And you're going to watch dilation and constriction of the eyes. This should happen at the same time on both eyes. Okay. Any unilateral constriction or dilation could mean pretty ominous signs, such as brain lesions, herniations. And sometimes you'll see that with drug use. Let your eyes focus for a sec. Now we're going to test more visual acuity using the accommodation test. Again, I'm going to use my pen light. I'm going to have her focus on the light. And as I'm moving it in, I'm waiting for the pupils to constrict and then dilate as I move the pen light out. This is testing for accommodation. Okay. So we're looking for the constriction to see that she's focusing on a near object. And as the object goes further away, both eyes should be dilating to widen the scope for her eyes to see that far vision. Good. Next test we're going to do is going to look at peripheral vision loss. So I'm going to cover my left eye and I'm going to have the patient cover her right eye. This is called the confrontation test. So I'm going to come from behind here and the patient's going to tell me when she sees my fingers. Now. Okay. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now. Then we're going to switch eyes and you're going to do both. Now. So again, testing for peripheral vision is actually peripheral vision loss. So that would be one of the things we could test for using the confrontation test. One of the other tests we're going to do is called our six cardinal gaze test. So it's going to test the six ocular muscles in the eye. So you can use your finger or you can use a pen light. I'm going to use the pen light. And you're going to have the patient follow in all six positions. So what we're looking for here is that the eyes move parallel and are able to go in all six fields. You're also going to be looking for what's called nystagmus. So it would be a very fast oscillation of the eye. Okay? Again, very common in brain lesions. So a little tick is OK, because your eyes are trying to focus on the, cardinal, on the, the field that we're moving to, or on the pen or your finger. But a fast oscillation is nystagmus, and that would be your abnormal finding. Before we move to the Snellen chart, we're now going to have our patient look through the red reflex and using the ophthalmoscope. So the ophthalmoscope is maybe for a little more advanced practice, but you're going to take your right eye and her left eye, or sorry, her right eye, and you're going to follow in and finding the red reflex. So the light of the ophthalmoscope should be placed on the pupil, and you're going to follow that light in and you're going to find her optic disc. So the optic disc is going to look like a bright orangey, almost red color. And through the optic disc, you're going to be able to see blood vessels in the eye. So this is the only place in the body that you'll be able to visualize blood vessels. So that was using up thumb scope. Now I'm going to have my patient get up. And we're going to test visual acuity in one other way using the Snellen chart. So you have your client move to 20 feet away from the Snellen chart. Okay? And I'm going to 
go up here to the chart. And you have line 8, which is your 2020 vision. So 2020 vision is going to be your normal vision for anybody. So that's what they're going to start with. I'm going to have her use both eyes to read the line 8. Go ahead for me, if you can read it. D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Perfect. So if your patient can read that, you can go to the next one, which would be 2015. So the idea is if you have a denominator that's less than 20, your person or your patient can actually see better than the population. So go ahead and try to read line 9 for me. L-E-F-O-D-P-C-T. Perfect. So that was a 2015 vision. So the idea is if the patient is at 20 feet, she can read at 20 feet what I have to be 15 feet to read. In other words, her vision is better than mine. But let's say the patient couldn't see that, and she had to see 2040, okay? So line 6, or line 5, actually. She would be at 20 feet, and I could read that same number at 40 feet, making her vision worse, okay? So the bigger the bottom number, the worse the patient's vision is. And the smaller, the better it is in the population. So that's the Snellen chart. And that's all we have for the eye assessment.